Hi internet, hi there. Chez, if you haven't come across me before, that's me. I play the saxophone, that's what I do with my time. And sometimes when I'm free, I answer your questions about the saxophone. And here is one today. So I am down to, there's a lovely chap called Zohorn who asked me a question a long time ago and I've just got round to answering you and I'm so sorry. Uh, but you've said, da, 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 my question, uh, what are some active sax groups on Facebook? That's a really good question. Um, there's a really good one called Sax on the Web uh, that is worth joining and I've asked various questions on there and got some really beneficial answers actually and there's various people selling things um, it's really useful so there's a good pass around of mouthpieces so you can get a real bargain on there and pieces of advice and things as well um, and because it's such a huge forum you'll get answers much quicker <laughs> so um, I would recommend that one Sax on the Web I'll put the link in the uh, description box do, 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 do. Who else have we got here? Uh, this is Rain, Rania, Rania. I hope I've pronounced your name right. I've said it in various different forms, so maybe one of them is correct. Uh, hi, thanks for this. Wasn't brave enough the first time uh, round. I wasn't brave enough to post the first time round. How did you start getting into paid gigs? And how would you introduce yourself to people so that people know you're serious at your craft? Uh, and how do you play all styles equally well? Do you feel more confident in some styles than others? How do you advertise that? Well, there's lots of questions here really, aren't there? <laughs> how do you advertise that to the customer so they're not put off? Um, if you're playing in a genre that's not your strongest. And thanks and loving your videos. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, these are all really great questions. So, um, Firstly, getting into paid gigs. Um, I guess I got into doing paid gigs by doing unpaid gigs. <laughs> so, um, I, I, you know, when I first got into the industry, so when I was still kind of studying, I started doing my first gigs then. It's definitely a very much a network thing. Like you have to get on with people. You can't, you've got to be a seriously good player to not uh, be amazingly sociable. It's, it's like a very, very much a network. I'll always book my friends over someone that I know is a brilliant player. I will book someone that's a buddy of mine, definitely. Even if it's an important gig. If I've got two players and I'm choosing between someone who's amazing and someone that's like less amazing, but awesome to hang out with, I'm gonna go with them. There's a lot of hanging around goes on in this industry. Um, so that is a big thing. Make sure you socialize, make sure you try and fit in and you make an effort with people. I, I like, I always think it's really rude if someone's just sort of sitting reading their book or fiddling around on their phone instead of like having an actual chat um, when we're in the green room. Um, so that's a good piece of advice. Obviously you need to be good as well, but there's a lot of people that are good. So if you're good and sociable, that's a win. Uh, doing stuff for free, yeah. So at the beginning, I just kind of said yes to everything. So as long as I could make it there, even if it was like 50 quid or something, I would go and do that gig for sod all money. Um, and it was fun and it was experience and I got better that way and it's about learning on the job. So I would link back, if I go right back to like, like a spider web of how I got my best gigs now, if I linked my way back and who I met to get to this point, it would have been because I did something for nothing at the beginning, you know? So saying yes to everything is a big one. Just, just spread yourself out and make sure that you are on as much as you can be. Um, <laughs> do you play all styles equally? No. <laughs> so I don't think of myself as much of a jazzer, really. Um, I'm much more kind of pop house stuff. So if I do get booked on a serious jazz gig, um, I guess I do kind of two things. One, um, you must have heard of the term fake it till you make it. So go in there confident and make sure you tell yourself you can do this because uh, people can smell fear. And the worst people for smelling fear are other musicians. <laughs> so uh, if the people you're working with uh, know that you're a bit insecure, then um, they're actually gonna, it's quite a judgy industry. It's pretty tough for that. So that's one of the things I'll do. I'll go in as confident as I can be. Um, and then on top of that, uh, see if you can manipulate the situation to suit you a little bit. So I'll suggest songs. I'm like, oh, should we do this one? This one's really good. And also just kind of being okay with the standard you're at. I think that's a big one. So, you know, when, when someone suggests a song and you don't know it, just say, oh, I don't know that one. Sorry. And just be like, oh, you know what? I'm good at other stuff. Um, so I always think that like when people don't like you or something for one reason or another, I just think, 
got plenty of friends, don't need more. <laughs> it's the same sort of thing. Like if you go into a gig and you know, people are suggesting songs you don't know, then just think about all the good stuff that you do know. You know, you've worked hard and you've got to that point. So try not to be over intimidated by it, but definitely don't let the client know because they are the ones that are paying you. So, <laughs> so just walk in there nice and confident, do the best you can and learn from it. Go away and learn, whichever songs they suggested, make sure you go away and learn them for next time. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Carsten. I love your videos, your performing and your smile. Oh, thanks buddy. Uh, a question from Denmark. I played alto sax for nearly two years and I want to also practice on the tenor. Are there any problems or concerns in doing that? I'm thinking in muscle memory, almost sure, etc. Hope you have a good reply uh, for the <laughs> vinegar mouthpiece incident. Okay, so switching back, that was because someone had an incident with uh, a mouthpiece like basically rotting and then so many people got involved with like, oh, use vinegar, use Listerine, use soap and water. And there was a big hoo-ha over how we should clean this mouthpiece, but it was great, it was a fun time. Uh, okay, so Carsten, um, switching on to tenor is actually a lot easier than you would think. Um, it's a bit frustrating, but for literally like a week or two. So all the fingerings are the same. Um, I use slightly different altissimo fingerings if you've gone up to that zone. Um, so maybe different altissimo, but apart from that, all the fingerings are the same. The mouth position is very similar, slightly looser embouchure. So if anything, you should find it easier and more free flowing than the alto. What you might find is the bottom end, it, you struggle to get it out or it keeps skipping up the octave. So just loosen up that embouchure, open up that throat, take that throat, open it up like you're yawning, like you're fogging up a window open that up for a tenor sax um, and also it just needs that little bit more oomph in the diaphragm you've got a longer tube that you're trying to carry that air down so those are the main things you'll find uh, maybe a little bit of issue with tuning because the mouthpiece is that bit bigger you've got a wider range of field so well if anything actually that should be easier yeah main main issue is is that low range you might find that is a bit frustrating for a couple of weeks but apart from that it's a joy to move on to tenor definitely do it if you haven't done already Okay, let's see what is next. Emilio, okay, thanks for answering my questions. Have we got another question here? Oh no, he's just saying thank you, that's nice. Um, okay, I think that is it for this video. So we will stop there and I'm gonna answer some more from another video. So if yours hasn't been answered, do not fear. There is one coming your way very, very soon. Peace and love. So I am serious about this subscribing thing. Hit the button. Do it. Do it or I'll drop the back. I will. I will. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll...